Hi, this is Jana. I am the personal development and life design coach for Inspiro Freak. And today we are finishing um, the Follow Your Heart, Find Your Destiny um, videos. And we are doing part two. Part one, we were talking about how to know what your calling or vocation is and how to follow your heart. And in part two, we are focusing more on what mastery means and how you can achieve that. So if you're not sure about part one or you haven't seen part one, please go and watch part one first. You'll see I have dark hair there. <laughs> I, I'm uh, transitioning to blonde, so I'm a bit of a, an orange head at this stage. At least the video is in black and white, so it minimizes the effect. But I'm still the same person. <laughs> Enough about me. Let's carry on with part two. Polio Coolio in The Alchemist said that when we love, we always strive to become better than we are. When we strive to become better than we are, everything around us becomes better too. So... What does mastery mean and how can we achieve this? To master a subject, you actually have to find a master that can teach you. Um, but how do we do that? Where do we find people that we can use as a master? You can go and look for people that you admire. Ask them to give you some pointers. Um, pay for a course that they offer. You can... Try and get to know them inside and out. Learn all you can from them and absorb the master's power. But if you don't know of a mentor, you are not at this stage able to afford a mentor. You can also use what is called a second degree role model. This would be a public figure, someone on social media that you admire in your field. Um... People you don't know personally. Go and research them. Read their biographies. Uh, follow them on social media. Find out how they got to be where they are at today. And if all else fails and there's no one that you can use as a mentor, books are great for being uh, a temporary mentor. You can read as many books as possible in the field of your interest. Um, you can personalize the author's voice in your head. Even better yet, you can listen to his audiobook, which I'm doing. I am downloading the audiobooks that I want to listen to from the books on my YouTube, on my phone. And then I have like 29 days to watch the download before I need to download it again. And it saves me a lot on data. So that's the way I'm doing it. But uh, buying a hardcover book is also great because you can then work in your book. And when I have hardcover books, I underline the things that I need in pencil. Um, and like I said, if you only change 1% um, for every book that you read and you read 100 books in a year's time, you can change your life 100%. So um, you don't need to know everything about that book. You just need to take some of the things that is said in that book and a very important part is to actually implement it in your life. Not just read it and get the knowledge, but actually implement it in your life. Um, what you look at, you take the book mentors, you, you personalize their voices in your head. You go and think about what would they do in a specific situation. Um... And then you use what you can and you eliminate what you don't need. When you go through an, an apprenticeship, it's plus minus 10,000 hours, like we said in part one. And we can divide this apprenticeship in three essential steps. And um, Robert Greene in his book Mastery discusses uh, the three steps that um, you go through when you're an apprentice. And the first step that you take is, number one, deep observation. You go and you 
watch and learn literally you mute your colors you key to the background and you drop any preconceptions and have a serious desire to learn um, you go and look for the unspoken procedural rules you look for patterns you observe and you analyze and when you start in a new job this is also very relevant um, to have this observation stage where you don't go and try to reinvent the wheel within the first two weeks of starting. You go and watch and learn. Go and see what the other people's schedules are like. What is the office culture? Um, who are the key players? What is the organizational structure? You know, you go and watch and learn. And I think it will serve you well instead of just going in there like a steamroller trying to change everything from the word get-go. Um, right, so the first stage is deep observation. Second stage of apprenticeship is your skills acquisition where you actually go on a hands-on and you start to learn the actual skills that you need to become a master in that field. And sometimes it does become tedious because it's an endless repetition of the same skills. But you begin with one skill and you master that skill and then you build on that. Um, and that will toughen your mind and that will also help your mind to start seeing the shortcuts and start recognizing patterns and being more efficient in the little things. Think about when you when you start driving. I mean, when you start driving, it's so hard not to drop the clutch and uh, and stall the vehicle. But when you are an experienced driver, you don't even think about it anymore. The clutch control is something that's that's a no-brainer. And driving a shift, I don't know if you if you're working with a shift or an automatic vehicle, but um, if you're driving a shift vehicle, I mean, in the beginning, it's very hard. And when you've been driving for about 10 years, you don't even think about the shift and the clutch and the whatever. You just you just drive. So that's the same with mastery. And you need that repetitious, endless um, skills development in order for you to become a master in that field, even though it's tedious. The third stage that we're looking at is the experimentation or the active mode. This is where you start taking on more responsibility. You go and you gauge your progress in terms of mastery. You look and you see where the gaps are in your learning. Um, you go and fill in the gaps. You use constructive criticism in order to become better. Um, you move past your fears and you start forcing yourself to initiate your own projects. So that's the third stage. So stage number one, observation. Stage number two is skills acquisition. And number three, experimentation or your active mode. Expanding your brain even further than the initial 10,000 hour apprenticeship, um, you can start having kind of an intuitive feel of thinking, a kind of three-dimensional intelligence. Um, and that kind of mastery comes with 20,000 hours of honing your skill. This is where you start actually seeing patterns and unlock mysteries to humankind that other people haven't discovered yet because they, they're not that experienced in that field as you are. So you start seeing stuff that... Other people are not. And um, if we look at Einstein's journey, for instance, um, people people always say Einstein was a genius. But Einstein has developed his skill in such a way that when he was presented with problems, his brain Im immediately started seeing the patterns and working on the solutions. And people see that as genius, whereas that actually was just complete mastery of his field. And it's within everyone's reach to master our field. We just need to spend enough hours doing that. And uh, it's seemingly superhuman power. But at the end of the day, it's just how much time have you spent on mastering your particular field. So some key strategies 
to mastery include choosing tasks slightly above your level of competence, rising to the challenge, um, not always doing the easiest stuff, not always choosing the easiest tasks, but taking on a little bit more, asking your mentor to push you a little, not always staying in your comfort zone, cultivating a negative capability by learning to embrace the negativity and uncertainty. Sometimes we are afraid of doing things because we don't know whether we're going to do it right, but we need to keep trying. I mean, if you are, I'm going to use my husband as uh, an example. He is a knife smith. And um, if he spent 10,000 hours only making one kind of knife, then he wouldn't have learned as much as when he took different steel or different materials and a different pattern um, or a different kind of knife and tried different techniques and different skills um, to hone his um, mastery in knife smithing. So it's it's like a surgeon. You can't just do the same old procedure for 10,000 hours and now you're a master in that field. No, you have to look at different scenarios and different things that can go wrong or right. And you have to push yourself. Um, exploring new or intriguing mysteries, going to solve problems, experimenting, not being afraid to try new things or different techniques, um, keeping a notebook at hand is very important for just catching your random thoughts and ideas. I mean, sometimes something just comes to you and if you don't write it down, you'll forget it and then it's lost forever. Um, it's that little bright sparks that we need to capture. Looking for the how instead of the what. Uh, going more deeply into the parts and improving the structure of the skill that you are trying to master. Visualizing it. Thinking in terms of images instead uh, of just um, abstractness. Seeing the diagrams. Thinking about the models. How you're going to do it in your head. And simulating your senses. Using all of your senses. Your smell, your hearing, your ears, your taste everything to try and uh, master that subject so go confidently in the direction of your interests and in time you can specialize by combine, combining skills uh, to solve problems and the future will belong to innovators of new fields leon brown said we betray our true selves when we do not follow the heart's desire for what the heart is attracted to is your destiny. So, thank you for listening to this video snippet and investing time in your personal growth. Um, please, you can subscribe to our channel here. You can also follow my blog and um, you can join our Facebook growth community. I'll leave the links in the description below or in the notes, the show notes. Um, so thanks so much and have a great day. Um, and I want to go and be whoever you want to be. Bye.